Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. Today, I have a conversation with Lydia Burdick. Lydia has a master's degree in clinical psychology, and she communicates extensively about making lifestyle choices that minimize the risk of Alzheimer's or other dementia. Lydia wrote The Sunshine on My Face, a two-lap book, in the course of caring for her mother who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Lydia quotes, One of my greatest pleasures was sitting next to my mother and hearing her read the words from this book when she had stopped speaking almost completely. I ordered a couple of Lydia's books and took them with me when when I visited mom this week, and you'll hear about that later. But without further ado, let's listen in to my conversation with Lydia. Hello! Hi. You don't need the video if you don't want to do video. Oh, it's up to you. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. So are you guys roasting in New York? Sorry? Are you guys roasting in New York? Uh, Yeah. And actually, I moved this morning, the final piece of my move (laughs) this morning. So I I was sweating, and I don't know if it was the temperature. I think it was me, more or less. Do you see me, by the way? Yes. I don't see you. Oh. Hmm. Not that I have to, but it'd be nice. <laughs> you think I'd be better at Skype by now? Did you hear that? Sorry? You'd think I'd be better about Skype by now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Miss Podcaster. Yeah, well, I just launched May 1st, so uh-huh. I've learned a lot of new stuff, which you probably know is good for our brain. It really is. It really is. I've signed up for a podcasting like course online, but I never quite did anything with it. And good for you for doing it. I'm, I'm kind of behind you on this. <laughs> well, I think I'm a little ahead of the curve because our uh, demographic for people yeah. dealing with loved ones with memory loss is yep. not as technology savvy as I guess mm-hmm. I am. I'm not very old, so my mom is only 75. Oh, I'm about six years younger than your mom. Okay. So, yeah. I I forget yeah. that I'm not the typical caregiver. Uh-huh. <laughs> In our, and, until I go to our support group. So, I love the idea of your book. Tell me about you and how you got, how, how you started to lap books. Yeah. Let's see. Well, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 1998, and that was after having it probably for a while, but we got her to NYU Medical Center, the Alzheimer's unit, and she was diagnosed. And my dad was a primary caregiver. He actually died two months after my mother died in 2003. But he was there, and I, being in New York, and they were in New York, I was very involved as well, as were my three younger siblings. So let's see, I, there was a day when I remember wondering if my mom, what my mom was reading. I I had, I was in the den with her and I'd given her some magazines to flip through and I went to get her something to drink and I, when I came back, she was flipping through the magazine and I was wondering what is she doing with this magazine? Is she reading? Is she looking at the pictures or is she just flipping pages. I was curious. And I realized I wasn't going to ask her to read from the magazine. I wanted to find something that was, that she would appreciate, that would be loving and charming. I had an idea. Actually, I had an idea for what I wanted to read with her to see if she could read. And I couldn't find it <laughs> in the bookstores. I Mom was a kindergarten teacher for 25 years, read to children every day. Read to us four kids, too, a lot. But I knew that somehow she wasn't talking at this point, Jennifer. She wasn't talking very much. But I knew that if I presented a children's book in front of her, she would start talking. What are you doing giving me this children's book? (laughs) And so what I just one day I decided, let me write some words. Let me just print out some words and, and test it out and see if she could read. And my friend who illustrated my books, I asked her to draw a picture that related to my sentences. And I sat down next to mom and I asked her 
to read, you know, nice size type on one page. And lo and behold, she did. And Jennifer, this is after she wasn't speaking except for yeses or nos at this mm. point. But with my encouragement, she read the sentence. And then I asked her, the first, oh, here's your dog. Hi, dog. As you see. Oh, that, that one's <laughs> Remy. I have three Goldens. <laughs> so I, I was curious if my mother knew what she was reading. And the first sentence was, I love to feel the sunshine on my face, which ended up being the first page in my book. And I asked her how the sun felt on her face, gave her a moment, and she said, warm. Hmm. So what I realized at that point was that she had residual reading ability and she had some more comprehension than I thought. This was going into real late stage dementia. This was late stage. So that's how I got started on, and I put together a couple of more sentences and then as luck would have it, or as divine intervention would have it, my friend said, I know some publishers, let me, uh, what if I, why don't I send it to them and see if they're interested? And that's how I found my wonderful publisher, Health Professions Press. And that was pretty amazing. All that came through as my mother was ending the, kind of ending her, nearing the end of her life. And here I have an opportunity to present this material, which had given us some enjoyment during those last couple of months. That's awesome, because I know publishing is a challenge. So that was, yeah. that was meant to be. It was meant to be, and one book came after another. There are now three books in the Tulap Book Library, and they're really designed for people in mid to late stage. Well, that would qualify with my mom, and my mom loves to go. I take her out of the memory community, and um, I try to find things that are either nature or... Um, we watched kids play in the splash zone in the park a couple Mondays ago and it was just she loves that I thought I was going to melt in the park because you know, it was the temperature was just going up and up and up and they her and her friend were not particularly interested in leaving the park right but for, fortunately for me her friend was ready to go home after about an hour and a half of sitting in the park watching the kids play in the in yeah. the splash zone so I'm thinking with your yeah. books she might really enjoy reading because that's what she did with my sister and I. Right. And you know what? I'd like to show you one of the pages in my book, which is exactly what you're talking about. And it even includes an ice cream guy. <laughs> this is, I love to sit outside and watch people walk by. Can you see? Oh yeah. That's awesome. And so it's, it's so what the book, the idea for the book is like, these are things people in late stage dementia still do. Like I love to take a nap under a big cozy blanket. There are, I love to feel the sunshine on my face. That's what I want. I do. I wanted people to relate easily. And I wanted it to be a respite for caregivers, too. And that's why I called it two lap books, because it's designed to be read over two laps. And so caregivers have to sit down and read to or with. And it's just like, okay, enough with the food, enough with the whatever. Just let's just sit down, get close to each other, which is nice anyway. Mm hmm. And, and read together. And, and Jennifer, there was one day when my sister, unfortunately my books were published after my mom passed away, but we had the soft copy. And my sister, Annie, lives in Florida. And I just finished reading my material with mom. And Annie called to say hi. And I said to her, I just you know, read some material that I wrote for mom. I said, why don't we read it again to you? So I had my mother hold the phone. I held the, the book. You know, and my mom read to my sister, and my Annie heard mom's voice, and she hadn't heard mom's voice because mom was just saying yes or no at the end, you know, towards those last couple of weeks and months. And when I took the phone back, Annie said, "Wow, that was amazing." I said, well, "What was it that was so amazing?" She said, "I heard mom's voice, and she had pleasure in her voice, and I just hadn't heard that in a while." And so what I see my books doing is giving people a chance to just relax and slow down and have some enjoyable time together reminiscing. And, uh, and, and it even worked 
long distance for us. It was really, that was really, and mom didn't mind reading it again. I said, I don't think mom might probably forget that she even read it. (laughs) That's true. My mom's got about a two minute uh, memory span. So she could read the same book for hours and not remember that she's read it a hundred times. Happens, but I, I did have three books. I have three, three Tulep books and those, and I think it's mostly for the caregivers. So it's something a little different, you know, it's not reading the same material, but you can just open one page. Actually, it doesn't, it's not even a book that has to go through each page standalone, just be one page. And just, and to add to just what I have in the book in the back, there are conversation prompts for each each page, and there are also suggested songs to sing along, to sing. That's so it's, it kind of turns into a bit more of an activity. That's, that's awesome, because one of my challenges, mm-hmm. you know, they tell you to simplify the hobbies and the things that your loved one did in the past, which my mom was very creative, and I've mentioned this probably a hundred times on, uh, probably on every podcast. Mm-hmm. She was very creative. She sewed, she painted, she did woodworking. And I cannot encourage her very often to participate in the crafty mm-hmm. activities that the community does. And it's frustrating because I don't want to just sit there and have her ask me the same question every two minutes because we all know how that is. So I've yeah. been, now that the weather is nice, although it's a little little bit hot for taking, you know, senior citizens out, but in the winter when it's cold and wet and damp, you know, it's like, oh, you don't want to sit in the dining room with these three ladies who are talking about the same thing. So I've been searching for something to do with her, and I did download on my iPad some short stories that were funny, and she enjoyed those, and... Yeah. This is, you know, this sounds awesome. So I'll definitely have to get all three books so I can leave them with her. And my sister can, you know, my niece, who's almost 13, could, would probably love reading to her grandmother. Yeah, that's the thing. It's really, it's simple enough for even younger people, for grade school kids, to read with a grandparent. And for a 13-year-old, for sure. Yeah, that'd be, I'd love to know how that goes. I know? will definitely let you know. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your mom and her journey, just because it's I'm, I get messages from people that learning about other people's family members and their journeys is helpful, which I have found too. So yeah, let me, let me see what could be, what could be helpful for folks. Well, there are two things that come to mind right away. One is that there are four of us of us children. Two live in in town and two live away. But we all got together for when we had the neurological visit at NYU. So we all got on the same page. And I think it could be problematic if siblings are not on the same page for whatever issue there is. But somehow, if if people can get on the same page and, and, and look at the same just kind of come up, come with up with the same plan, the same ideas about what's next. We were fortunate. Not everybody is. I know your situation, your mom's in a facility, right? In a, mm-hmm. in a place. We were fortunate that my dad took care of my mom and we were able to ultimate keep her at home and on the last few in the last twenty four hours have hospice care for her. But we were able to keep her at home and and my dad took himself to a caregiver group. Which, when he told me he had done that, I was shocked because he wasn't that kind of a guy, but he did go to a caregiver group and was run by two 83-year-old social workers. Mm-hmm. And I had been telling my father, Dad, we need to get a cleaning lady in. We need to have somebody clean the house. You're not, I'm cleaning it. No, you're not cleaning it. And then one day he tells me, I'm having somebody come in to clean. I said, well, how did that happen? He said, well, Emma told me to. <laughs> That was one of the support people? That was one of the social workers. Okay. This group. So Emma Emma was the one who, so in terms of advice, you know, caregiver support group is great. Um, there's great advice in that. And, and you're in a group like that, I think. I heard one of your podcasts just before. I don't know if you're, are you in a caregiver, caregiver support group? Yes. I think they're wonderful. And I, I'm encur- I would encourage people to do that. The other thing that I did, Jennifer, that I thought, I just did it, and I don't know if I've read or heard about this anywhere, but before I went, opened the door to my parents' apartment, I said to myself, 
this is the situation. Let me see how much enjoyment and joy I can create today. And let me, because things are not going to be getting better. That's true. Things are, so let me enjoy what I have now with mom, as opposed to feeling sorry for myself or feeling sorry for mom and our family. Let me enjoy mom and what we have now as much as I can. And I did that every time. And as you know, things do not, did not get better. Mm -mm. Worse, they got slower and whatever it was, but that's what I did. I've heard that advice a lot is to find the joy in every day. Because if not, you're going to go crazy. And, you know, it's, there's, my mom being in a memory community, there's some things that are just downright frustrating. I showed up one day to visit and we were walking somewhere and I noticed that she was wearing a black sports bra and I thought, huh, wonder whose bra that is because she didn't have one. (laughs) And, you know, you could, you could go so many different directions with that, but I just, I just laughed because I was like, you know what? They're in and out of each other's rooms. You can't control what they're doing because they don't understand. They don't. They're not processing that. You know that they're sharing. It's it's crazy. And you know, I found that um, there are three Dianes in my mom's community, which is. Yeah, I, heard, I was here listening to a podcast just now when you mentioned that. That's funny. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah. I keep trying to find a way to do an episode on that that's not too weird. May, right. She's been there. April, May, June, July, about 16 months. So we had to put mom there after my dad passed away because, Mm -hmm. like, as I mentioned, my sister has school-age kids. I had just turned 50, and my husband and I are both self-employed, so it's like, uh, yeah, we're we're not able to devote the time to take care of her. And being in the memory community has been awesome because she has other people to repeatedly have the same conversations with and they don't get cra- too too upset with her although a funny story that I have talked about before was um my mom's dog is currently with her and one of the stories my mom repeats frequently is how she's had a dog all her life and mm-hmm. when she was pregnant with her first child which happens to be me mm-hmm. my grandmother who happens to be a hundred and amazing because there's nothing wrong with her except visually That's impaired from glaucoma her. so i hope yeah. i have that genetic absolutely you do have it there you do have it in there yeah Probably. i just hope it's stronger than the dementia side on my mom's side of the family anyway i guess my nana was not a dog person and when my mom was pregnant with me they had two dogs and nana said well I suppose you'll be getting rid of the dogs now. Well, that apparently put such an impression on my mom that she remembers that story. So she was repeating that story, and her friend, the other Diane, said, Oh, you've told me that story 803 times. (laughs) And I had the hardest time not just rolling on the floor laughing because I thought, Mm -hmm. you know, your memory is not much better than mom's, and you're making this statement, and, man, I hope mom's not torturing you with this story. So then about a month later... Mom goes into the story. We're sitting there talking. Her dog's, you know, we're in the courtyard. Her dog's running around. And mom goes into the story, and the other Diane starts actually verbatim repeating it. And I thought, this is kind of almost slight elder abuse because this poor lady has heard the story so many times that even though she can't remember that I'm the daughter, she gets confused as to the relationship I have with my mom. She remembers this story, so it's... (laughs) You know, it's it's wonderful because I know my dad would get super frustrated with her, and mm-hmm. he never took the advice of, of joining a support group. Mm-hmm. And with his chronic health problems and his personality, I and he, he just would get very frustrated, and he never heard the advice of not trying to drag him back into our reality. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's not... Um, yeah. You know, it's it's not something that you just automatically think of. And when we were in the process of moving mom to the community, that was one of the first bits of advice I had gotten, which was a total relief because my dad had just died. My grandmother mm-hmm. also had Alzheimer's. So when my grandfather passed away, 
sometimes grandma would be like, she would burst into tears and say, oh my gosh, you know, your father left me for another woman. And then they, my aunt or uncles would say, no, no, mom, you know, dad died. And then that was the first time she heard it. And so, you know, it just relived all the trauma. And I didn't want to go through that with my mom. And we don't. She's in 16 months has only acknowledged dad's gone twice. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So I definitely second the caregiver support group. The first time I went, the very first meeting, I got support and felt like, oh, this is a great place. And the second meeting, the following month, I was actually helping other people. And I thought, yeah. wow, this is this is perfect because, yeah. you know, we're it's a definite yeah. give and take. And the only thing that bothers me is every month the group gets bigger, which is good, but it's bad. So. <laughs> I know, I know, and 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 the same thing for me. It's like every every month there are more and more people I feel who can use my books and have it be a resource to connect. And it's like I kind of wish this my I wish the market would go away. I, yes. you know, I don't. I <laughs> so I can maybe the books can be for children, but you know it's um it's here and we have to deal with it. That is true. Deal with it as best we can, supporting each other, and and having patience and. You know, just for me, it was again getting getting the most I could out of every visit I had with my mom. And I don't, you know, she goes, she died in 2003, and I'm glad I did do that because I don't have her anymore. You know, it's uh, she had a stroke. Mm. Had a, about a week later, she was gone. And, yeah, uh, my mom was officially diagnosed in September of 2011, but mm-hmm. in August of 2008, she was rejected to become a kidney donor for my dad. My dad had diabetes Mm -hmm. because of cognitive impairment. And I knew before they retired from our family business in 2005 that she had problems. So I feel like I'm the one, I'm the, I'm the lucky one that's gotten to live with this with mom for, you know, 15, possibly more years. I can't, you know, it's hard to look back and go, oh, yeah, that's when it started. We actually think it is. Yeah. she might have actually started showing signs in 1995 because there were things right. that she did yeah. that you look back on and go, ah, yeah. maybe, but, you know, you know, we'll never know. So, yeah, I know. I think one of our early signs was my mom led tours in the Metropolitan Opera house, the back of it, oh, which neat. was... Is it, yeah, she loved opera. She was a singer, not professional. She loved to sing. So she would lead these tours. And the back of the Metropolitan Opera House is huge. It's a maze. It's complicated. It's not easy. And one day my dad got a call from the Metropolitan Opera and said, you know, we love having your mom as our tour guide, but she's getting lost. Mm. And we don't think we can have her anymore do this so that it was almost like it was coming in from the outside there and we kind of then we started seeing things you know it was uh then we started seeing things yeah that's it's hard i mean i've known people their loved ones have been you know five years and some of them have been 10 and it's like oh, i'm approaching 20 <laughs> it's like and, and my mom know, is 75 yes. Is her how's her how's her health other than this? Because if her health is good, she could she just if her constitution is good, you'll have her for a whole lot longer. You know, if she was had other complicating illnesses, which I don't wish. Obviously, it's you know it's if, if but if she's healthy, that otherwise yeah nope she's physically healthy. She you know doesn't need any walking aids. I did have her at the memory clinic earlier this year, and he was a little surprised, but I had to tell the The doctor, you know, I'm here because part of her medical history is a thousand percent wrong. And my Mm. sister and I are not completely dialed in into everything. Like I had assumed she was diagnosed in 08. So to find out it was three years later, it was just, you know, and Mm. she'd been there in 2014 and I didn't know anything about that. So I'm like, you know, Mm. I need information and, you know, I need, I need details Um, he didn't think she'd be more than five years, but we are financially planning for 10 to 15 because my maternal grandmother lived to 91, but she didn't get Alzheimer's until 75, you know, mid to later seventies, like the, the age my mom is at now. So 
it's hard to know. <laughs> it really is hard to know. And I think, I think the bottom line is we do the best we can and we support each other and we make the most of what we have while we can. So do you have um, plans for some more books? Well, I have three, and if I may tell you the names of them, one is The Sunshine on My Face, the other is Happy New Year to You, and the other, and I can show you, I know our you, our listeners can't see this, but then the third one is Wishing on a Star, and they're all the same, they're all one sentence on a page of activities that people still can do, it's intergenerational, it's interracial, it's inside, outside, it's I've got Walker Man there, there are canes, mm-hmm. wheelchairs. It's, you know, I want people to identify with what they're reading. And sometimes people can read. My mom had residual reading. I didn't know. Um, sometimes they don't. But sometimes with a little encouragement, they can tap into that residual reading. Yeah, I think my mom might be in that category. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time we'd go out to eat, even with my dad before he passed... Mm-hmm. She would look at the menu and then ask what he was getting and then have the same thing as him. So it kind of became obvious that she wasn't reading. And I thought, well, menus are, sometimes they have too much stuff even for, you know, us yeah, quote, unquote, for normal people. folks. <laughs> and recently I had her at a coffee and tea place that I really like that's local. And she was looking around and she saw the sign by the door and... um she read the sign, like closed, and it said something mm-hmm. else. And I was like, oh, that was interesting. Okay. Yeah. So perhaps something simple like your books might connect with her, which would be awesome. Because we're yeah. going to need something, you know, it's not going to stay 100 degrees forever. This <laughs> you know, It will get cold and rainy, and we won't be able to take her yes. out as much. And, yes. you know, yes. Yes. I'm definitely going to order those up. So right. a, a quick yeah. question: Did the friend that illustrate them do they have they had Alzheimer's or dementias in their life? Or? No, not really. No. But it's interesting because, as you can see, and, and the listeners can't, I I stopped col- I stopped coloring my hair in two thousand, and then I started seeing that it was interesting. I started bumping into women who were not coloring their hair, looking great. So I started to write a book about that. And I was working with a writing coach who turned into my illustrator because she's an artist too. So all of a sudden I'm working on this silver hair book and then I have this idea for my mother's book and I kind of switched gears. And since I was working with Jane already, she said, I'll do some illustrations. And as luck would have it, I got my publisher and then my publisher hired Jane to do all three books. And so all, th- all the illustrations are whimsical and charming and colorful and pretty and I'm very happy with them. And I could guide people if they want to go to Amazon or to a local bookstore. There are two lap books. And my name is Lydia Burdick. And I'm interested in any any comments that people want to write on Amazon, my Amazon page, about how they how they go with the books. And I'm actually interested in talking to some people like you're talking to, pe- to me now. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to talk to you again. Maybe it's on my own podcast or maybe it's on yours. But if I'm not up to speed, it'll be on yours about how it was, like what your experience was um, reading the Chula books. Well, I will do that. My husband happens to have Amazon Prime, so I think I will order those today. And let's see, it stays Thursday. Maybe I'll have them before Monday's visit, and then I can add to this episode and let you know what mom thought. Her friend, Diane, always has a paperback with her. And Hmm. I don't really ever see her reading like I would think of somebody reading. So I don't know if she actually is comprehending or she's just going through the motions. So it'll be interesting to yeah. read the book with both ladies and get their... Exactly, yes. And as a matter of fact, you're reminding me that when I was at a, at a facility not too long ago, I had my book and I had about eight women who were, had, who were there because they had mid to late stage dementia. And I, I took the book around, and I had them either read it or I read a page to them. And then I went to the next person. So I had an activity taking my book around with going to different people and having them engage with each page, whether it was looking at something in the illustration, reading the sentence. So it turned into a, a, a little mini group activity. That sounds awesome because there's women in the community that 
They're just wanderers. I swear. I'm surprised there's not like a divot in the floor because they just, it's Mm -hmm. square with a beautiful courtyard in the center. And they just walk around and around and around. And Mm. one of them, my mom's neck, they, they have adjoining rooms with a Jack and Jill bathroom. And so my mom's next door neighbor is Irish and she speaks mostly mumble with some Irish and there's a few <laughs> English words thrown in. So if you listen very carefully, sometimes you can figure out what she wants. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if some of the people that that don't settle into the activities, if you could maybe engage with them. Mm-hmm. Um, even when they're standing, even when they're standing, like read, you know, what's this sentence or what's in this picture? What do you see? Where's the color red in this picture? Where's the dog? Every, virtually every page has a dog in the picture. Oh, my mom will love that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Remy, find the dog. Jane had dogs and cats. I was like, you'll see them all over the place. Okay. Where's the dog? Where's the red? Where's the blue? Where's the lady? Where's the man? Like that. It's like simple questions to engage. And like I said, there are conversation prompts and songs in the back that relate to each sentence. So That's that, awesome. Yeah. So got any last bit of advice before I let you burst into the rest of your day? Well, my advice would be, I, and you've, I'm sure you talk about this with other folks, and I don't know if we've touched on it. It's really for the, us caregivers, and I was a caregiver for a while, take care of ourselves. We take care of ourselves first. It's kind of like in the airplane. You know, when you first hear, when you first see that thing drop down, and you say, what you're going to do is, and you're ready to hear, hear the person say, put it over your mouth, and then put it over your little child. Mm-hmm. Let's so say... I think that's what they that's what they do say. They say first put first, you thought you think that they're going to say put it over their child first, but they don't. They say put it over yourself first, and then you can put it over the child. So you got to I might say, just really take care of yourself. And like I've heard you talk on podcast in your podcast that I just listened to about not stopping off all the time. Perhaps it's like giving yourself what you need, whether it's a massage, whether it's a hot bath, whether it's an ice cream, whatever the heck it is, that, you know what, your mom or your dad or whoever it is, they'd want you to. They'd want you to take care of yourself. And they, they can't say that. And that is true. They want you to. And the other, my last bit would be, my mom didn't say thank you, per se. But I knew she was thanking me. And so I think that for all of us, you know, I cooled myself in it because I was one. All us caregivers just know that what they're doing is just saying thank you. Yeah, my mom is doesn't verbalize thanks very often, and I have to just kind of find the thank you in the physical cues because if you wait for it, you're just going to upset yourself, and that's pointless. Yeah, so just my mom wasn't even talking aside from when she read my books. Just I, but I knew she was saying it, and I knew she loved me. So it's letting that, letting that, letting us feel that appreciation and love as we go through, as you go through, as people who are listening go through this journey. Well, that is awesome, and like I said, I'm definitely ordering those because I wanna, I wanna try this with mom <laughs> and the other okay. people in the community, and Great. you know, I'll definitely report back. Oh, absolutely, Jennifer. Absolutely. Yeah, I was, thank you so much for the invitation to be on this podcast, your wonderful podcast. And <laughs> thank you. Continued success in your work. And I'm um, right behind you. On a, you, know, you might be on my podcast. You might be my first person on, on my podcast. Oh, I'd be honored. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks so much, Jennifer. You too. All righty. Bye bye. Bye now. I did order the books, and my first impression was they're fantastic. They're beautifully illustrated. Per the name, they are pretty big, but they're not too cumbersome to to work with, with your loved one. And so I took them with me on my last visit to Mom. And here is a little bit about how that went. And now how much you like to read, so I thought you might like these. I do. You might want to turn it to the pages with the pictures, because the drawings are just beautiful. Well, this is interesting about people with dementia, because as your parents get older, they don't get as accurate, and so that, that was of interest to me. You're listening to Mom's Friend Diane. 
Obviously, Diane processes the printed word far better than my mom does. And I found it really fascinating that she thought the books would be great for, quote, her parents, who I am assuming have been gone for quite a while. Oh, no, that you got me. Warm apple pie and vanilla ice cream. Yep. But you like chocolate. Now you're telling me you like... I can can force myself. Oh, you can force yourself for uh, apple pie and vanilla ice cream. Okay. Oh, Oh, here we go. I love to read this book out loud with you. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm the dog in the corner. You're the dog. I think you're the lady in the purple sweater. This is cute. Two lap books are designed for intimacy. The books are large enough to be spread across two laps. I snuck away to the restroom for a couple of minutes But Mom and Diane kept reading, so listen in. Here's one. I love you just the way you are, and it's a young girl sitting on the bed of her grandmother. That's very nice. These books are fun to read. This is a great book. Mom and Diane clearly were enjoying the books so much that they kept reading them even when I was out of the room. But they were also fantastic to read with Mom because it gave us something to talk about together. That one says, I love the smell of coffee at breakfast. Okay. I like the smell of coffee, but we... I do too, but I don't drink it. Yeah, me neither. John does, but I don't. I didn't know that we both did the same thing. Really? Yeah. I think Diane summed it up when she said... This is adorable. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Hi. Hello. So Hi. thanks thanks for jumping back on a call with me. I just wanted to update you. So I took the um You Are My Sunshine and or no the Wishing on a Star and Sunshine on My Face with yes. me yesterday. And mom and two other residents so thoroughly enjoyed them. It was it was amazing. Oh, great. They um one gal read all the stuff at the intro and about you. <laughs> she loved the story about your mom and how your mom loved to read and the mm-hmm. bit in the beginning. So mm-hmm. the uh, talking points in the back were great. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to let you know that they thought they were fantastic. And I, I was a little bit surprised because the gal I refer to as the other Diane, there are three yeah. of them. My mom and other Diane are tight like thieves, so it gets very confusing. Mm -hmm, Um, She is actually still reading, reading. Mm -hmm. And she at first said, oh, aren't these books for kids? And I said, well, they could be, but, you know, and she started looking through and she loved it. Mm. So it was just, it was great. That's great. So did, did, was there an opportunity for uh, a caregiver to, did you read with your mom or she was able to read on her own? Um, I read with her. Her, it seems like her processor is faulty because sometimes she read a page just fine and other times yep. it seemed like she was having a problem seeing it or it, mm-hmm. it's like she can still read, but the processing isn't working exactly. right. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, but she loved it and she, they, they just kept swapping the book back and forth. <laughs> it was like, oh, here, you want to read this one? Okay, you could read that one and then we'd switch back and forth and back and forth. It was oh, great. Oh, oh, I'm happy when, to hear that. When the uh, executive director comes back, he's on vacation this week, I'm going to suggest that they invest in some so that they can do on a bigger scale what I did yesterday. Great. Right now they're in the middle of renovations, so mm-hmm. it's probably not on top of their priority list. But Right. It, it was. Right. I was amazed at how it was relaxing, mm-hmm. you know, as everybody knows, I'm in California, and I think I'm about in the only part that's not on fire. But mm-hmm. it was 100 degrees yesterday. It's very, very smoky. The smoke mm-hmm. is filtering okay. in from multiple fires. So, yeah, yeah. I couldn't, didn't really want to take mom out. And sometimes staying in the community is mind-numbingly boring. But yesterday was nice. It was really nice. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Did anybody sing any songs along the way? Or, we did or a little time? bit. Neither my mom or I could carry a tune with a handle. So <laughs> since I knew we were recording, I didn't, I didn't encourage that too <laughs> much. That's fair enough. You know, I didn't want to torture people. But like I said, it was really fantastic. I wasn't 
Wasn't sure what to expect, and I'm super mm-hmm. pleasantly surprised. That's great. I'm, I'm delighted to hear that, and uh, I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Definitely. Going forward and supporting each other in our sharing, you know, positive things for caregivers. Yeah, it was, It's like I said, I'm definitely going to suggest it to the um, memory community director and the executive mm-hmm. director because... They need they need a stack of these books for everybody because they were they were great. Excellent. All right. Great. Well, you have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, you so much. And I'll definitely be ordering the third one soon. Okay, good. And we'll we'll be, we'll keep in touch. Definitely. Thanks. Thanks so much. Great. Bye. Bye. I highly, highly recommend two lap books for an activity to do with your loved one. And obviously they'll do it with their friends or another family member. It would be great with mom or dad, with the grandkids. It's, it just, it blew my mind. It really, really blew my mind because I have not had my mom focus on anything that well in a very long time. So that says a lot about these books and the illustrations and they are just fantastic. So you can go to the show notes. There is a link to order them, and I would do that as soon as this episode is over. Give us a review. That is how new people will find us best, and like I've said before, I cannot be a supportive podcast if people don't know I exist. So have a great week, and I will talk to you again next Tuesday.